okay so i think we are now live so hey guys so today we will be trying to cover the remaining uh, questions on this list and then again tomorrow we will add more questions uh, so for today's let's see if we can complete these uh, questions or not okay so first of all the first question is for rotate matrix so we will go to the question okay so here we can see they have given like medium difficulty that's fine so you are given n cross n 2d matrix representing an image rotate the image by 90 degree that is clockwise okay so you have to rotate the image in place that we uh, that means we don't have to use it uh, external like we can use external space but uh, try to have it here only I think so which means you have to modify the input 2d directly okay so do not allocate another 2d matrix to do the rotation yeah so this is the case and we have been given like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 then if we rotate it by 90 degree clockwise okay so what will happen this 1 2 3 becomes here 4 5 6 comes here 7 8 9 comes here okay similarly if we have a bigger matrix uh, you can see the first row becomes the last uh, column and uh, similarly the second row uh, second last column third row third last column fourth row fourth last uh, sorry fourth last uh, column or the first column okay so yeah this is good uh, if we had like used extra space what we would have done is taken uh, this into consideration like two for loops uh, we uh, take the first row save it in the <coughs> last uh, column and similarly uh, we go uh, one after the other okay so now we have to do it in place so let's see if we could find uh, any logic for building this okay let's switch up and see okay okay so now we have been given a matrix that is one two three four five six seven eight nine okay and we have to do a 90 degree clockwise turn so this matrix just uh, get converted to one two three four five six seven eight nine okay so we have to do this in place that means uh, we don't have to allocate the whole ma uh, create a whole new matrix and then uh, do this uh, rotation so for this to do in in place what we can do Okay, let me see if we try to move one, two, three, right? Three, I think, uh, okay, three should go here. I think uh, we will be needing one, three cross one matrix. So there we will be saving, let's say the last uh, column. So the last column was 3, 6 and 9. Okay, now what we do is we take this uh, first row and we put as per our requirement. Okay, so this becomes 1, 2, 3. Now remaining will remain the same. Okay, and we have that here 3, 6, 9. 
okay so since we know uh, this was the this is the column and it comes here okay so we could uh, directly just place it here so we would be needing the remaining ones okay let me go it's something cycle Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so what we are, what we were trying to do is take this one, two, three, and we had to place it here. Okay, and then what will happen to this three, six, nine? So three, six, nine comes here, and similarly, we would be needing the remaining so this was now we have 369 is done now we have 789 okay so this comes here and 147 this comes here okay let me place this here so let's consider where exactly is one going so it is taking this place okay three is moved here nine is moved there seven is moved there okay and then we have movement of two here six here this here and this here okay Like this moment is possible, but uh, uh, like it's a three cross three matrix, which is good. Now, okay, let's try this logic on a bigger matrix. So we had uh, the second example right in the question. So the second example in the question was. One nine eleven two four eight ten thirteen three six seven and then we have fifteen fourteen twelve sixteen okay so this would transform to fifteen 13, 2, 5, 14, 3, 4, 1, 12, 6, 8, 9, 16, 7, 10, 11. Okay. Okay. So let's start from the uh, outermost. So 5, 11, 16, 15. Okay. This is a 4 cross 4 matrix. So what we see is 15 is taking 5 place 5 is moving to 11 11 is going here and 16 is going here okay that is cool now let's visit 1 so 1 goes here okay and uh, 10 goes here and then 12 goes here and 13 goes there okay now let's check for 9 so 9 is moved to here 7 goes here 14 moves here and 2 moves there 
pool and similarly we have 4 8 and section 3 so these move in cycle so 4 8 6 3 so yeah this logic seems to be fine it's just we need to formulate this so yeah, index was initially i and j we are considering this so 0 comma 0 moves to 0 comma 4 let's put it like this okay and uh, then what we were doing was we were moving uh, 0 comma 1 to 4 comma 4 oh, sorry 0 comma 4 and then 4 comma 4 to 4 comma 0 okay uh, so first issue is we are considering zero indexing so should keep it like that three 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 okay and three okay so this is what we uh, the first iteration of it looks like the outermost so that's one and the second is we move one comma zero oh, oh sorry zero comma one not one comma zero so first row second element has moved to second row last element and uh, second row last element is moved to 12 right so that goes to third 2 and 2 3 goes to 2 0 okay now we have to formulate this somehow so i what is the change in i from here to here so i was zero and then three this is difficult j was three okay let's say i minus uh, i1 minus so i and j this is 1 this is 2 so i1 minus i2 is equals to 0 and minus 3 and uh, here 3 3 again 0 so and similarly we have j1 minus j2 so j1 minus j2 minus 3 and uh, <coughs> here we have 0 and here again we have uh, 3 okay okay and if we add these what we get is minus 3 minus 3 and 3 so leaving the first one now we got is minus sorry we got is minus three minus three and three so that does not sum up well so let's try to get something from here if we can i j i j so here i1 minus i2 is equals to one sorry minus one minus i2 and so I two I one minus so I two. Okay, so I one minus I two. Okay, fine. So here, uh, then we get I one minus I two as minus two, and then here zero. Okay, similarly J one minus J two. So that is minus two, and then we get J one minus J two as one, and then we get as three. 
so it is not making much sense as of now so okay let's try to devise it for 3 cross 3 first and then we'll see oh no Okay, let's go through the fun discussion forum and see what exactly is going on there because as of now I am not getting the logic. So we are going for Java. Let's see if we have easy Java solution in place. It's easy to understand. Uh, the idea was first transpose the matrix and then flip it's symmetrically for instance one two, okay after transpose it becomes one four seven okay then flip the matrix horizontally swap okay okay that's a uh, logic <laughs> okay I think uh, my maths is pretty weak so I am not exactly sure how one flips, uh, sorry, uh, one transpose or how to rotate a matrix basically. So the basic formula that they had used is to transpose it first and then a transpose was basically a swap between I, I uh, sorry, matrix a i comma j with j comma i okay and then what we have to do is we are then taking it as then we are going to flip the matrix so transpose and flip so here what happens in the swap is he takes uh, a of i comma j and then it is being swapped with a of i but instead of j we are going to take uh, the whole length let's say m and minus 1 minus j okay so this is the basic logic and after this it should be transformed to the solution that we are looking for for anti-clock uh, rotation transpose step would remain the same the last step instead of flipping the column the, okay Okay, let's get back to the question and see if we can code this or not.
okay so basically what we need to do is first we need to transpose it and once that uh, matrix is being transposed we need to flip it okay so for transpose what we are going to do is we are going to swap i sorry we are going to swap matrix of i and j with so this would be the swap that is required for the transform and uh, for the flip what we are going to do is we are going to take the matrix i comma j and we are going to flip it but instead of uh, just j what we are going to do is take the length matrix length let's say n minus 1 minus j so this is the these are the two steps that we need to take so before uh, doing that we need to first have the length of the matrix so let's say int equals n equals to matrix dot length okay and then we need to have a for loop sorry for loop and i is equals to zero to i less than n i think uh, it is a 2d square matrix right or it is just a 2d matrix okay they have given just the 2d matrix so i think we should put it in much more words here instead of just saying that uh, it is n minus one uh, basically we want to take uh, the element uh, what is the length of that particular so if we go back to the discussion forum java and this one so you can see that we have taken matrix of length and then okay that's uh, going to be same here so what we did first here is we have taken the matrix and we have uh, we are just swapping both uh, i comma j with j comma i values and then that is the transformation or transpose and then we are going to do is the flip okay so for the flip i think uh, they went for uh, length by 2 for the value of j okay okay let's see we will see what is going on then later then i plus plus g plus to zero to j is less than so matrix of zero sorry zero dot length so this will uh, give the number of elements in the column okay so this is done now what we need to do is transpose uh, it. so we will have a temp variable where we will store the value of matrix i comma j and then what we will do is going to put the value of i comma j as j comma i and then we are going to do the same for j comma i and we are going to set its value to temp 
so this is the transpose that we were looking for oh sorry now what we are going to do is <clears throat> we are going to swap this so let's go through this and uh, try to swap this in our notepad so let's say one two three four five six seven eight nine we uh, transpose this so uh, we are going to actually flip uh, this uh, up against the diagonal value so diagonal value will remain same other values will be swapped so 7 3 8 and 6 okay now what will happen is we are going to flip this so i comma j will become so basically uh, our end result should look like this that is three two one i think right one two three man don't know how to do that <laughs> okay so one two three four five six seven eight nine so basically the 7 should go here and uh, the 1 should come there and the rest of the things will remain same. So what we are doing is we are going to uh, flip this against the horizontal, uh, against the vertical axis okay that is lying between them. So, so we don't have to cover the whole thing uh, from uh, j equals to 0 to the whole length because if we do so then we will uh, what we will be doing is we are going to swap this and again when we reach here we will swap that again so it will result in the same uh, response but we don't want that so we will be going to uh, the whole length divided by 2 so yeah and uh, that should solve the problem so let's go to our coding and here uh, we can see uh, j and here we will divide by 2 and we store the value of i comma j in the temp and we are going to provide this value here with uh, i comma the value that was length of the matrix or it is better to put it like this minus 1 because of the indexing and minus of j so we get that okay so and similarly what we are going to do is take this value and its value we will put it as temp okay so after this we should have the matrix rotated uh, by 90 degrees so let's try to run this and see if we are getting any issues or errors oh we got that so int temp index 3 is out of bound oh sorry here I did was i plus plus instead so it was not the right thing to do let's see okay we got a wrong answer so expected was 7 for 1 we got was 3 2 1 so that is just flipped as of now I'm still not sure what went wrong here so uh, what I could see here is so temp value matrix value of 
J comma I will be given to this I comma J. Okay. And J comma I value should be given to that. Okay. It seems to be fine. Let's try to print out this. it like that okay uh, let me try to print it then here itself what are the values that we are getting for temp and so this one I think it's working fine if we want we can comment that out and we don't want this one let's see if we are able to transpose it or not so yes this is where I think the problem is we are not able to transpose it so let's see what is going wrong here uh, this is correct j plus plus okay fine int temp equals to matrix of i comma j so we are showing the value of i comma j there and then we are setting the value of this this is correct and then we are going to set this, this okay what is going wrong here I am still not sure so let us spread it out okay mm, let's copy this and do the whole printout of the matrix So actually we will get this matrix only so it's better to print out there instead of printing out here. So what we are getting here is first the value of temp that we had. Okay so temp value and then we need the value of I comma J and then we need the value of J comma I okay so this is four and before and after okay bad feeling about this I think I should dry run this before doing all this logging and all so matrix 1 comma 1 so temp initial value is 1 that is right ij okay what okay yeah 1 is fine that is fine uh, for 2 it's 2 and 4 2 and 4 that is correct so it should be 4 comma 2 that is correct but I think then again it goes there right yes yes got it 
so we are again doing the same mistake that uh, would have been done over here so let's first uncomment these okay let's let it be like that we'll see okay so uh, we had done right here like divided by two else it would have to be uh, done twice so the same is uh, same error that uh, had come up here uh, we got the value of i uh, here uh, two com uh, two comma four before like for uh, i i value of uh, zero comma two and then again we went to two comma zero and we then again changed it so we don't want that right here so let's just uh, go with this so it will cover only the half of i so if uh, it goes here zero if it goes here zero and it will cover one mm. okay let's go to the notepad and try to understand what is going wrong here So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we have to swap it between these two. Okay, so I goes here from zero to n. That is true, but it does not. Okay, so for that j goes to. So it is zero comma zero, zero comma one, sorry, uh, one comma zero, two comma zero. Okay, this is zero comma one and zero comma two. So first value of i is zero, then j is equals to i plus one to let's say n. Okay, and then the next value of j uh, i is equals to one. Okay, so it goes from here okay yeah i think uh, this is fine to do it like this okay let's go and see what uh we're going wrong here let's do i to that and let's try to uh we don't need much of okay uh, let's see okay so what we got was 147 okay and yeah now we can see that it's been uh, transposed so we can remove the loggings all the system out and we can uncomment this one to flip it and see okay we i think about this okay um yeah i think this should be fine uh, let's test and submit this okay that is faster cool um so this is how we rotate a matrix image first we need to transpose this and then we have to flip it so that cyclic thing that was coming so that could be achieved like this okay so moving on to the next one so this is done so moving on to the next one merge intervals so we have been given an array of intervals where interval i start from start i and end i so merge all overlapping interval and return an array of non-overlapping interval that covers all the interval in the input okay i didn't get that much so let's go through the example so they have given that interval this is given and the output is this since okay 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 got it so since interval uh, 1 comma 3 and 2 comma 6 overlap 
merge them together into one comma six okay uh, uh, let's uh, go to our ipad and see okay so we have been given ready and 2 comma 6 and 8 comma 10 and 15 comma 18 i think this question had been asked in some uh, written exam uh, that i had given but i don't exactly remember what was the company or uh, how was i able to solve it or not but yeah okay let's go through this so basically what they are saying is we have been given an array and this contains all the interval okay so so if uh, this sorry so this represent first interval and uh, similarly the next so this is the starting point of that interval and this is the ending point of that interval okay now we have to merge all the overlapping intervals and return a non written an array of non overlapping interval but uh, that covers all the interval in the input okay so we have to okay so if it is uh, overlapping then we have to merge them else we have to just uh, keep them in the array okay fine so if we see here uh, it starts from one and it goes till three and the other one starts at 2 and it goes till 6 so we had merged it from 1 to 6 okay and then we had from 8 to 10 and from 15 to 18 okay so we don't have anything in common between these so we have left it like that okay so we will be having 1 comma 6 and 8 comma 10 and 15 comma 18 in the array in the final uh, answer of the array okay now how do we go about solving this question so basically what i could see is we could check the intervals right so we have to check the first and the last starting and the ending index so let's say we are starting with one yeah okay uh, let's take the smallest uh, starting index and uh, the highest or, or the largest ending index okay so here it is 18 so all the numbers uh, in this array lies between these two okay and now what we have to do is we have to check uh, what all are in that range correct so what we can do is we could iterate uh, through the array again and uh, for the first one we had uh, the ending index as 3 so we will iterate through the array and see what is the starting index of other um, other uh, elements in this array so we have uh, 2 8 2 8 15 okay so we can see that 2 is less than 3 so we can merge these two and similarly uh, if uh, we had merged them then we could uh, put them aside and then we could again go for the array and see the last index with the first index so if anything that exists less than like uh, if the starting index of any uh, interval is less than the ending index of any interval then we could uh, club them together so that's the logic that i am able to come up with but i think uh, that will result in uh, o of n square or more uh, complexity so um, okay 
let's i think uh, we should try to see if we can do okay i think uh, we can consider even uh, this if uh, they are equal as well because 1 comma 4 and 4 comma 5 they have been the second example uh, they are considering them as one so if it is equal as well we can consider them okay so Array of array. That is a whole lot of story here. Okay, um, let's start with this. Things should have given this value. Okay, so this is what we get. Now we are iterating through this array, right? Now we have the value of J with us and the value of I. Okay, so uh, these control in a sorted order. I think so. Okay. Okay, so if they are in sorted order, then also can we do anything about it? I'm not sure. So let's start with this. I is currently zero and the value of J is also zero. So if this value that is the current value is Okay, 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 I did an error What am I doing? It so the value of j could be either zero, sorry here zero or one. So zero will represent the starting index and one will represent the ending index. So don't want to iterate through the j again. So let's try to remove this. So this is the value of here okay so if we are it 
so this will represent the starting index so if this starting index is this index should be less than the ending index right of so this is always true uh, but what I'm trying to say is we have to iterate again I think for the j value so we could move from this to the next value right so let's take it as j here as well j and here as well j okay and here we will be starting from j equals to i okay actually it should be i plus one because we are not going to uh, again take the that same index okay so the value of uh, the first one we are considering this okay so if the starting index that is this is less than ending index of other uh, no 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 this should be for j okay and for so the e ending index so is less than Okay, ending index is uh, greater than uh, any of the starting index then we are going to take that and consider it so if that's true what we are going to do is uh, take that value um, equals to take this value okay so instead of for I think a while loop would be much better here I'm still not clear on the condition so I have to look at okay okay I think uh, we spent quite a long time on this one uh, even I'm not able to find out a brute force solution as of now so let's go through the discussion and see what we can come up with okay so our task in the question is to merge the interval which intervals which can merge okay only those interval can merge whose start end is like uh, that is correct uh, so this these intervals can merge okay that is correct now in order to know adjacent intervals which can possibly merge we need to sort all the intervals on the basis of the start so take some initial range zero index interval as initial range now start iterating from index i uh, sorry from index 1 interval array it starts lie in initial range then increase the range by this okay compare the end of the current and the start of next so if the is larger uh, then we merge the interval but not add to list to check further intervals we track this with 
s e start and end variable if the above condition is not met then we add the interval to list okay so yeah we sort that okay uh, we took the list okay start index and index okay now what we have done here is we have taken a while loop and then we have taken these two values and if s of end s of end is less than math of okay max of end and e then we place a value there and add it here in the else condition okay okay since it needs to be in array okay so let me just uh, I think I know the solution but uh, as of this moment if I try again then it will be like I, w I should be able to solve it but uh, as of this moment I don't really want to uh, get on the, this one so let it uh, be in the in progress state or uh, yeah like that uh, we will be moving on to the next one for now I'll guess and then so let's say if we are able to do the half of it for today then it should be fine so we are given two integers num a num two uh, sorry num one num two and sorted in non decreasing order that is ascending and the two integers that is m and n represent the number in number of elements in num1 and num2 okay that's fine so merge those two in a single sort of array in a non decreasing order okay so the final sorted list, uh, array should not be returned by the function but instead be stored inside an array num1 but accommodation uh, accommodate this num1 has length this uh, where First n uh, elements denote the elements that should be merged, and the last n elements are the zeros and should be ignored. Num2 has length n. Okay, <coughs> so this is the array uh, three objects. Okay, and here are three, so we merge them and then we see. Okay. Explanation the array we are merging are this and this. Okay, so what we can do in this question is first of all, uh, we start from this index uh, after uh, like the array is over and we start placing all the values of num2 in here and then we can sort this whole thing so that will take n log n but uh, i think they have given it as a sorted array somewhere i think yes so since they have given us a sorted array i think uh, it should not take o uh, greater than o of m plus n so let's try to think of it so what i can uh, think is right now um, so first uh, we will compare this element and uh, this element here so whichever is smaller uh, that will uh, remain here and uh, then we compare the next element and the next element here as well so whichever is smaller will remain here and then we come to the next and this so here in this case uh, we can see that uh, this element is uh, smaller than uh, this so two should be moved here and I will say uh, to move this three to here 
okay and then here uh, if it is zero then we will uh, move this value here so let's think of it like this okay so let's take for int i is equals to zero to i is less than okay the value of uh, m right so m plus n actually i plus plus okay so so we have to compare both of them correct okay mm. so basically let's maintain the index for both the array because it will be difficult to check so index uh, index 2 is equal to 0 and similarly we will have it for index 1 okay so now if uh, nums of 1 sorry nums of 1 of index 1 is uh, less than or equal to nums 2 right nums 2 of index 2 then what we do is we increment index 1 and if uh, sorry to know how to do this now uh, so else if uh, this is not the case and let's say this is the case then we will then what we have to do is we have to make a swap first so temp is equals to uh, this value okay and this value will be set as nums2 index 2 and after that uh, we will be so actually we don't really need to uh, increment index 2 we just have to increment index 1 here what I could say now so nums 2 index 2 uh, its value is now equal to the temp okay and then we can uh, increment index 1 okay that's cool so else condition else uh, okay so before this condition right so we have to check for zeros because uh, if we reach here and uh, this condition is first checked so that becomes uh, difficult so let's do this if uh, we are getting this value equals to zero what we have to do is we will set nums1 index 1 as nums2 index2 and we will increment both the indexes
okay so whenever we encounter this we place uh, nums2 value inside the nums1 okay so this should work and let's try to see that and it is going to take only of m plus n uh, it seems to be fine uh, do we have any other test case uh, yes we do so let's try that one or uh, just uh, run it and see if there are any edge cases yep there is one edge case so this value does not exist so have to be careful on this setting up these values right ah, mm -hmm. that was some serious edge case okay uh, so we don't want to consider these two if the value of either is empty so so if so what was the value of it zero right yeah if m is not equals to zero then this is the case and if n is not equals to zero then this is the case okay now the only issue that i think here is that uh, we won't be having these values then how you will calculate them so okay let's go to description what was it saying let's say if it's empty then uh, we just continue with it right and yeah that is fine the only issue that i think here is so i think uh, this should not be issue because uh, i think m plus n should be the whole values so if this is the case okay so we just continue with uh, whatever uh, is given right so yeah it should by default uh, set uh, the same value as num1 so let's try to have that edge case now <laughs> okay <clears throat> sorry let's go back and see so the value is uh, first of all 0 and uh, we have as 0 and here we have let's say three and see what happens oh this won't work right yeah uh, okay so that's uh, value is one let's see okay this is working fine let's try with uh, the empty one and see what happens um its value is one that is two i guess so yep let's see <clears throat> if it works this time oh come on yeah what is wrong now
so what it should return is one two three four five six so we come to this condition okay now something just hit my mind now let's say we have this right and let's say we have more uh, value 7 and 8 as well so if uh, this is here then we will swap these values correct but uh, what will happen after here so 7 is there okay I think now it is getting a bit issue because if we swap these two values right and the next value lies in here then how are we comparing these two okay so I guess we have to move it there or what so it's a sorted array right so these zeros are the main problem first of all okay and if we try to add it let's iterate through that okay that will result in o of n square so don't want that as well like o of n, not n square but o of m cross n so we don't want that as well let's go through the discussion what can i say because uh, one okay let's go through the ipad once and see if we can come up with any solution as of now okay so here is four five six seven and okay now zeros and here we have one two three okay so we have one two three uh, four five six okay so here here we are comparing these two so once we compared them what we found is this one is here so we put that value here now uh, since it was a sorted array right so any value that uh, was here will come only after we are done with the remaining ones okay so uh, let's say we swapped it right right now we have one here and we committed it then two goes there and the five comes here six goes there three comes here okay now seven is there now what happens uh, is we should again come here and see the value but if even if we compare that okay if we compare that and then do again this then it will come here and it has been moved here 5 6 and 7 okay that is fine now let me think of this let's say we change up this order here we put one three five seven zero sorry two four six okay so one two nothing three and two we swapped them okay so three comes here two comes here fine we, we move this to here and now what happens it again gets swapped so three comes here 
file from here now 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 so just won't work right yeah i have to check the discussion forum for this one okay let's go through the through the discussion forum and see what we can get okay so from the front and avoid extra moving manipulation okay so we have a tail that is m minus one and n minus one and finished us okay so while tail is greater than or equals to zero and tail two is greater than or equals to zero this is okay Oh, this actually gave me one idea but then again like the oh, I I think this is uh, written very well but uh, I still am trying to figure it out so let's uh, so what I got was okay let me check my hypothesis if it's correct or not so what I was thinking is uh, this like uh, starting from ending uh, that had zeros it gave me one idea that was uh, to move a solution to the end so let's say we have this right so 0 0 0 and 2 4 6 okay so what we are going to do is we are going to check which one is the smaller one okay see so we got the one okay so what we do is uh, we take this one we remove it from here and we move it to here okay and here we can uh, place the zero okay now the finish index uh, let's put it like this okay so this is the finish index and then here okay so after this is done like the starting of this then we go to third and we check for this here and we see that this is the one so we remove uh, the zero from here and put it over here okay and then again we check it here okay four and three and we remove it here and put it here okay so we got three now we got four and here we have seven so now the thing is how you will manage it now so we have uh, more zeros right we could place it over there but that won't result in a good solution either okay so let's take up the hint as uh, they had given right two tails uh, tail one tail two so let's see if we can find anything out of that so one three five seven zero 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 two four six so tail one was actually the value uh, of index uh, the whole length and minus one so that was m minus one and this was m minus one and uh, they had given the finished as uh, the last index here okay so what was happening was okay so what was happening uh, if we consider this then we are here 
and this is here kv2 okay so yeah instead of uh, checking for the smallest we can actually check for the largest sprite that will also work for us so let's try that so 7 is greater right so we move it here and we remove 6 from here and replace it here or let it be like that but we have to move it somehow right or onto that place because every element now uh, considering here will be smaller than that number so yeah let's put it over there okay so let it be empty I don't want uh, to move it much okay now what we have to do is we move this tail here and this here so now we can see that 6 is there so we moved 6 to here and uh, then we have uh, 5 and 4 so we compare them again we move uh, 5 here now since we have uh, moved it over there right so we don't have to worry about uh, the coming index because that will be working fine so 3 and 4 so we will again cut it and 4 and then uh, this moves here so again here it will move 3 okay and this will move here and here it will come 2 and it should be 1 okay that is fine now I think uh, we can do it like this uh, let's try to code this and see if uh, we are getting any errors or not okay uh, yeah we go so instead of having all this okay we should have uh, like uh, ending index right so in uh, tail one and tail two right so t1 is equals to m minus 1 and uh, similarly we could have t2 that is n minus 2 sorry 1 so this is the index that we are looking for as of now and uh, while case we are putting uh, T1 is greater than 0 and uh, T2 is also greater than 0 okay okay so now what we are going to do is uh, we are going to compare okay now we need one more variable that was for the finish so end index or and let's say just n m plus n minus one so that is the last index so last should be fine okay so uh, now what we are going to do is we are going to compare the uh, these uh, uh, t1 and t2 indexes and place them into the last one okay so if nums of t1 is uh, greater than sorry greater than sorry nums1 right nums2 of t2 so what we are uh, getting is uh, the first case that says uh, we are getting a higher value in uh, the uh, in the index uh, in the first uh, nums1 array and uh, that value is greater than the last index of the nums2 array so that means 
uh, the highest value exists in the nums one so what we are going to do is move it to the last index of the uh, nums one so nums one last will be equals to nums one t one okay okay so else if now we get uh, the reverse condition greater than or equal to then what we are going to do we take uh, okay yeah so we have to decrement these as well so else we uh, never will going to reach the condition right so okay now it just realized just realized that uh, it should be greater than zero so that is true okay yeah that is fine so once uh, any of these two indexes uh, reaches zero then uh, the game is over so that is fine so nums2 oh, sorry uh, we are going to place the value in the nums1 uh, last so last is also going to decrement here okay so here nums2 last will be updated with the value of nums2 Two. sorry nums1 last will be updated with the last value of the nums2 so that is t2 and uh, we are going to decrement t2 as well as we are going to decrement last okay so this is done and uh, so yeah this should work so let's try to run this and see hope uh, okay i guess we didn't see the <clears throat> so yeah, either of the t1 or t2 is not reaching zero why uh -huh. okay let's try to run this case in our notepad and see if it's working or not so one two three zero 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 and uh, that is the value three and we have two five six and that is also three okay m n okay fine uh t1 t2 values so t1 is equals to 2 t2 is equals to 2 so while these two are greater than 0 so we have the condition so now we are checking t1 t2s so if uh, nums of t1 is greater than t2 so then we have the case else condition uh, we are going to put it over here so we don't care about this and uh, we move this pointer here and we change this value to 6 and we move it to here okay so now now we uh, go and check for this these two so which one is greater so this one is greater then we again do this and put it over here and then we again check for these two so after checking these two what we see is okay i think uh, should have greater than equal to here since we are going to go till the zeroth value 
okay so t2 value is actually zero over here so yeah t1 is still there so now we'll replace it here sorry uh, sorry uh, here, here we put it three okay and then we compare this and this and uh, whatever we got we put it over here so t1 value is here and uh, t2 value is at zero so once we replace it t2 value is equals to minus one so that's the condition uh, it should break so let's see if it works with that it seems it will time exceed again what is going okay sorry what is going wrong here So after every operation we are going to No, oh, sorry. Let's decrease the size of it and try to run this. I don't think they return anything if it's going to take more time. So, okay, we got the standard output for this. So, yeah, 225. Well, that is correct. So, T1, 2, 2, 5 before condition it's going. Okay. So, T1 is equals to 2, T2 is equals to 2, and last is 5. So, why is that they are not going in these condition nums one tn bit confusing why is it not going here mm. 
nums one t one nums two not sure it should go right why what is wrong while condition is okay but <coughs> Nums one, right? T one. So, what is the value that we are getting for T one and T two here? Guess I put a lot of things in here. Right, so Three and six. Why is it not going in if condition? Okay. Oh shit. Man. Man oh man. Both the conditions are same. How will it go? Oh man. Fine, uh, that seems to be working fine. Let's try to uh, submit this and okay, let's try to have other test cases, right? Okay, <coughs> three, five, and here two, four, six, and run this. Okay, it seems to be working fine. Let's submit this and see. Alright, yeah, uh, this condition. T one, T two, zero. The T1 value is 0, right? So it allows that, or it doesn't. So both of them should be greater than or equal to 0. So here we can see T1 value is minus 1. Oh my god! So this condition won't work here. Yep. Uh, now what we can do? Yeah, 
will someone give zero into five? Yeah, uh, this one is is fine. We are going to move one to there. That is totally fine. So sorry. So if we put our condition t1 or t2 is greater than zero, so what will happen? So in that case, uh, if we reach uh, let's see and check yep that's what I wanted to see oh sorry This will be determined later, but let's see. Yep, T1, T2 can't exit like that. So what we need to do is, uh, we have to see if it is uh, minus one, like that's like special conditions. Now we have to put F, sorry, it's all caps if t1 is equal to minus 1 that means there is no element in t uh, like uh, nums 1 so what we'll do is we can iterate through the whole num2 and place it in the num1 so can we do it like This time, n or m anything, uh, and not anything, and it should be i plus plus, and then we place it uh, nums of one of i is equals to nums of two of i. Basically, this is the case. If it is minus one, what about the zero condition? I have to check that now. Yep, because that will also result in this. So if uh, n equal equals to not equals to zero then we sorry then we can go peacefully else it will result in num one as well so let's see nums one to have three but got six nums one okay sorry Yep, that works fine. Now, in this case, it should be working fine. The other case, right, we need to check this one. Let's see. Okay, cool. Um, we have two, three. Okay, it works fine. Let's see and hope that I didn't get to that. Um, or runtime error last execution input was this 
model start input two zero one one what narrow it should work right So, if uh, this this nums one is less than nums two, but by that time it would be like t two is. equal to zero okay we are continuing at equal to zero right so mm, but we have to consider oh, okay So basically, if uh, T2 is greater than 0, that means it should not be equal to 0, then the indexing will go here. Okay. Okay, but uh, I think we were looking for uh, it should be greater than. Right. So if uh, we compare two and one, okay, so it goes fine. We compare and we see that uh, it is uh, like uh, t t two will be minus minus. So it will reach to minus one and it should not execute after that. So that should be fine. But uh, so nums one is less than nums two. So nums1 is not less than nums2 so it should not have come here. So let's see what's going wrong. So before it executed and after. It went in F condition which is correct. Okay. Wait a minute. What went wrong here? Yeah, we considered this. Okay, it was in zero, but uh, after this, it went. Okay, there. Mm -hmm. We move it for all condition. I think this should work, but uh, then it will become the case like, yeah, if it's minus one, then how we can proceed for it, right? Yep, so after this, if anything is left, then we have to take care of that right so let's try to put it there like this if uh, like t1 equals to minus 1 then what we will do so it is not compulsory to move it to the minus one right it could just end up like that okay i think uh, for this one as well i will uh, check for the solution tomorrow and uh, get back to you because uh, we got a multiple wrong answer 
but somehow we are close to the uh, solution but uh, still need to figure out some things in here so tomorrow uh, we will see uh, how we can fix this so for today let's uh, put this as well in uh, pending condition or in progress okay so uh, basically these two uh, so the first one is done the other two uh, are remaining uh, we will finish them and like we just need to think out the process exactly what is uh, going wrong in our solution and thereafter we will uh, go through these three uh, problems and try to finish them up okay uh, for today let's uh, close up uh, with this so thanks for watching and i see you guys in the next one bye